Bunting is a bright and colourful way to decorate your event. The Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee it was a staple of every celebration, and even now, 115 years later, no traditional street party is complete without it. I'm going to show you how to make Victorian-style bunting in five simple steps. The Victorians would have used cotton or muslin to make the flags of the bunting, usually opting for bright primary colours with plenty of red, white and blue. You can use any fabric. Lightweight polycottons work well for outdoor bunting because they stand up well to the English weather and they flutter nicely in the breeze. Heavier fabrics work best indoors. Uh, but don't feel that you have to buy new materials. You can also get fantastic results by recycling old fabric. These are made from some old curtains. Next, draw and cut out a template for your flags using card. I'm making triangular flags about 34 centimetres high and 24 wide, but you can use rectangles or even this pennant shape. Lay down your fabric and mark it with your template using tailor's chalk or a pen. You'll need to do this lots of times, so try to get as many flags as possible from your fabric. Then cut out the flag using sharp scissors. If you want to be clever, try cutting on the bias on the diagonal to the weave, as this helps it fray less. In 1897 it was popular to buy Jubilee art muslin with the dates 1837 to 1897 stamped on it. If you want to add a personal touch to your bunting, you can print with a rubber stamp and fabric ink which you can get from many arts and crafts shops, or you can get custom ones made. I'm going to use these diamond and crown shapes. Roll a small sponge roller into the ink, then ink up the stamp. On a flat surface, place a cushioning layer of fabric, then lay your flag on top. Now place the stamp down onto the fabric and press it down hard. We're keeping ours very simple, as Victorian celebrations seem to be more about quantity than quality. One factory in Liverpool made 250,000 yards, that's 140 miles of bunting, just to decorate the Wood Street area of the city. And there was so much bunting at a fate in Middlesbrough that it was described as a cloud of waving colours. But if you want, you can finish the edges with pinking shears or even make them double-sided. You can add applique or more elaborate prints or embroidery. There are some great examples of bunting in the Jubilee A View from the Crowd exhibition at Kensington Palace. If you've printed on your flags, let the ink dry. Then you just need to sew them into bias binding tape. First you'll need to fold the tape over in half. Just place the triangles into the fold and pin into position. I'm hand sewing using a back stitch to make it strong. A sewing machine will also do a good job. Think about the spacing when arranging the flags on the tape. You may want to leave spaces between the flags to make the most of what you've made. And be sure to leave at least 10 inches of tape at each end. For Victoria's Jubilee, bunting was hung everywhere, from every business to every household. Local authorities strongly encouraged people to hang bunting from their homes. Now you just need to find a good visible area to show off your wonderful work. Use a spare tape at the end to tie it off securely. For more Victorian party guides, including baking and dancing, visit the Historic Royal Palaces website, hrp.org.uk, and search for Victorian party tips. <laughs>